Greetings, folks. Today we're going to be looking at a parallel connection of resistors. We talked about series, where we would have maybe something like this. And we discovered that when you would look into this, this was equivalent to just a single resistor. It was equal to the sum of these three. All right, so if we just call this R1, R2, and R3, then our total was just equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. And that was kind of obvious, right? It's adding resistance, resistance to current flow. So as we add more resistors, there's more resistance. We just add them up, and that's what we get. Interesting thing that happens with a series connection, of course, is that if one of these breaks, if one of them opens up, nobody gets current. So, you know, if these were, for example, lights and they were in series, if one of these things blows out, the whole string goes dead. So now we want to look at a parallel connection. Which is a completely different sort of configuration. Here, you kind of look at this maybe as like a daisy chain. One thing leads to another, leads to another. In a parallel connection, it looks more like a ladder. All right. So you've got R1, R2, R3 for however many resistors we might have. And the question then is, what is that equal to? What is the equivalent of that? All right. Well, there are a couple of ways we can approach this. Um, before we do, I'll just point out that with our little light issue, if one of these things blows out and opens up, well, the other uh, two resistors, or three, or however many more we have, they would still be connected, right? That wouldn't impact, let's say, a voltage that was applied there. That might be a good thing. Okay, now let's consider a piece of material that we would have. You know, this is what we did with the... Uh, series case. Let's go back to sort of basics and talk about a piece of material. We're going to pass current through it like this. There is a length, there is a cross-sectional area, and there is a resistivity rho. And we know that resistance is equal to rho L over A. So let's take another piece of material that is identical to this. All right, so I'm going to have two of these things. So this L is the same, same material, same cross-sectional area. Let's just say, for argument's sake, that's a thousand ohms, that's a thousand ohms. Now, what if we connected them like this? All right, so the current goes in, it can split between these two, and then it recombines on the way out. That's essentially what a parallel connection is. Now, if you think about that for a sec, you could take these two pieces and mash them together so that you would have essentially this situation. Right? And this dotted line here would represent the seam between the two. And what do you wind up with? Well, you got the same length, same material, obviously, but now you've doubled A. So you basically have two times A. And resistance is inversely proportional to A. So you've cut the resistance in half. Two identical resistors, 1K, 1K, you put them in this configuration, it's half, it's 500 ohms instead of 1,000. A way of looking at this is that you're enhancing conductivity. Over here in series, right, you're adding resistance to current flow. In this case, you're basically giving another path for current flow. In other words, you're enhancing the conductivity, and because resistance is the reciprocal of conductance. Obviously, as we get more and more conductance, we get less and less resistance. Okay. Can we put a, a nice number on this, right? I'm not going to just subtract the resistors instead of adding them. That's not going to work. How does it actually, uh, you know, boil out for us? Well, essentially, 
if we extended this idea so that uh, maybe I had a, a, a larger cross-sectional area, in other words, let's say that this, instead of being A, was 2A, all right? So with double area, I already know that that would be a 500-ohm resistor if I was starting with 1,000. So now I've got 1,000 ohms in parallel with 500 ohms. How does this uh, lay out? Well, this 2A would turn into 3A. Okay, so that would be one-third the res original resistance. In other words, we'd be looking at 333 and a third ohms. Hmm. I'm seeing a pattern here. Well, it turns out that our total is determined based on G total. So I could say that the total conductance is simply the sum of the individual conductances. All right, just like we summed up all the resistors for series, we sum up all the conductances, you know, for however many we have, um, to get the total conductance. And then we can take the reciprocal of that. Or more simply, if you want to put it in terms of resistance, you would say 1 over RT is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, and so on and so on for however many parallel resistors we have. Of course, I want to know what RT is, so we just take the reciprocal of the whole thing, and what we find out is RT is equal to the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals. Like so. Right, for however many resistors we might have. All right. Fortunately, there are a couple of little shortcuts you can use. If we're only looking at two resistors, which is a pretty common situation, that's what we started with, what we say is that total resistance is equal to 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. All right? Now, if I multiply through by the product R1, R2, in other words, R1, R2, divided by R1, R2, what we wind up with is R1 times R2 over R2 plus R1, right? We multiply this by R1, R2. R1's disappear, we get an R2. Over here, we get an R1. So we wind up with this equation, the product over the sum, and it's appropriately referred to as the product sum rule. So 1,000 ohms, 1,000 ohms, multiply them together, that's a meg, add them together, that's 2k, 1 meg divided by 2k, 500 ohms. All right? So you can always use this if you have a pair. If you had four resistors, you know, you could do one pair, do another pair, and you have two resistors, do that pair. If you have a large number of resistors, it's easier if you just do the conductance. But if you just have pairs, you can do this. There is another little trick that we can do. And that is, if we write R2 in terms of R1, in other words, this works out well if you have nice um, like integer multiples, like 2 times, 3 times, 4 times. But we'll just say that R2 is some multiple n of R1 and substitute that back into the equation. Then we can say that RT would be R1 times nR1 divided by R1 plus nR1. Now, if you factor out your, R, your um, R1s over here, right, and then we combine this up, we get an n uh, R1 squared. This will simplify into just n over n plus 1 times R1. So if I have two resistors, one is let's say five times bigger than the other, like I've got, um, you know, like a 2K and a 10K, then the result, N is five. The result will be five sixths of the smaller. All right, so let's say we've got um, 100 ohms and 200 ohms. I want to find RT. So I can do it 
three different ways, right? I can say it's RT is 1 over 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200. All right, so 1 over 100 is 10 millisiemens. 1 over 200 is 5 millisiemens. So I'd say it's 1 over 15 millisiemens, and I'd get my value. All right, that's going to work out to 66 and 2 thirds. I'll just round it off and say it's 66.7 ohms. Could do the product sum rule. It's 100 times the 200. So I'm going to have ohms squared up here, divided by 100 plus 200. All right, so it's ohms squared divided by ohms, which gets us ohms again, right? So same thing. We divide that by 300 ohms. We're going to end up with 66.7. Finally, you could recognize with these two that R2 is twice the size of R1, factor of 2. So therefore, it's going to be 2 thirds, right? N is 2, so it's 2 thirds of R1. In other words, it's 2 thirds of 100 ohms, which is 66.7 ohms, roughly. Okay? All right, the more resistors we have, I think you're going to discover that the more useful this form of the equation is. It's just easier to just take all the values, figure out what their conductance values are, add up all the Siemens, take the reciprocal, you got your RT. Um, if you have just two resistors, you know, product sum rule, uh, sum rule is very quick. If they're nice multiples of each other or even approximate values, then, uh, you know, this will work out pretty well. All right. So, you know, given standard resistor values, you might not get an exact value of 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 or 4 to 1. Um, you might get close to that, but you could still estimate. You know, if you had, let's say, a 10K um, in parallel with, and here's a symbol that we use, two sort of slashed lines in parallel with, just a nice way of um, sort of compressing that, right, as a... As a equation, if you will. So I said, oh, I got uh, 10K in parallel 4.7. Well, that's about 2 to 1, right? So I'm going to get about 2 thirds of this 4.7. You know, it's going to be 3K-ish. Sometimes you just need a ballpark value, and that's good enough. Hey, little side note. Sometimes you will find a value like 4.7K listed as 4K7. It's, it's bonus information. Um, basically, what they do is they take the, the decimal point and they put the multiplier there. So it could be K, it could be uh, mags. If it's just res like a value of resistance, like you hit a 5.6 ohm resistance, sometimes they'll do it like this. They'll just say it's 5R6. The reason here is, you know, decimal points can get lost. You make a photocopy of something, right? They disappear quickly. They're kind of ignored. So this way, you, you stick the K in there, or the M, or you know whatever, um, it becomes much more obvious. Little bonus for you. All right. So, you know, given, given that, let's take a look at uh, a couple of problems. So I have a couple of resistors over here. And, uh, you know, let's say we've got 4K and 12K. And I want to find out what is this equivalent to, right? In other words, from these two terminals, let's just call them A and B. If I put a, a, a digital multimeter on here and measure the resistance, what is this value? In other words, what is 4K in parallel with 12K? Well, we could take 1 over 1 over 4K plus 1 over 12K, right? Get it that way. Product sum rule, right? Product sum rule would be 4K times 12K divided by 4K plus 12K. All right, so that's going to give you 48 meg over 16K. 48 over 16 is uh, 3, and megs over Ks is Ks. So... 
you got a 3K over there. Or you could use our little uh, shortcut, this guy right here, because this is a nice ratio, right? This is a three to one ratio. So it's three to one. I expect three fourths of the smaller. Well, three quarters of four is three. I mean, that works out perfect, right? Beautiful. Okay, now, what if we turn around and we add another resistor to the hair? All right, so I'm going to add, I'll squeeze it right here in the middle. It won't matter really where we add it. They're all in parallel. This is all one line. This is all one line. So let's add this third resistor in here, and we'll say it's mm, 6K. So we can do 1 over 1 over 4K plus 1 over 6K plus 1 over 12K and come up with a value. We could also do some uh, product sum rules. You know, we already found out what 4 in parallel with 12 is. Right? We already know that's 3K. So you could then take that 3K and put the 3K in parallel with the new guy, with the 6K. Right? You could use product sum rule on that. So that would give you 3 times 6, or 18 meg over 9K. Right? The megs over the Ks get you Ks again. And uh, you know the, the 18 over 9 gets you 2. So this should be 2K. Or you could recognize that's a 2 to 1 ratio. Use this one again. So 2 to 1 ratio, it's going to be 2 thirds of the smaller. 2 thirds of 3K is 2K. All right? So every time you add a resistor, the total resistance goes down, just keeps dropping, 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 dropping. Um, so the, the overall idea is kind of like the exact opposite of a series connection. You keep adding resistance, you get more and more and more and more. And the, the resistors that are like important are the big ones. You know, if you had a, a thousand ohms and 200 ohms and 600 K ohms, well, who even cares about these, right? I mean, this is the lion's share of the total resistance. These things are so small. The opposite happens over here. You know, if, if you have a really small resistor, that's the one that dominates. Okay? So 4K, 6K, 12K, and then I put on, you know, a 2 meg, well, that's hardly going to make this thing budge at all. But if it was 2 ohms, it's so tiny, it's got so much conductance, that these things don't make much difference. Right? The final shortcut occurs when you have resistors that are identical. I'll just put three of them down here. And let's say they're all 1K. Well, they all have the same conductance. And if the conductance is add, and you take the reciprocal, well, you have N number of resistors, all right? Then it would follow that you should get N times the conductance. And you're going to take the reciprocal. So what does that mean? That means R is going to be the, uh, R total, that is, is going to be the individual R just divided by however many you have. So 1K, 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 there's three of them. That's 333 and a third ohms for the combo, all right? Great. Our next thing is to you know hook this up to a, a voltage source or a current source and see what the heck we get next time.